What is up guys, it's Troy at The Full Setup back with another video for you and this is going to be a bit of a weird video. Well, it's a weird video for me and it's a good video for me actually because this is the first thing I've ever received from someone I do reviews for that hasn't told me they're coming, they've just shipped it to me like here you go, have one of these. And this is a very expensive item. This item is going to retail between, you know, somewhere between about 450 and 600 pounds in the UK when it comes out. So obviously I was very flattered and I was very thankful to Topping for sending this out to me. This is the DX7 Pro. This is their top of the line, fully balanced um, DAC and headphone amplifier. Um, although there is going to be a better, just a DAC coming out soon, the Topping D90, which I think uses the AKM4493. Um, so I'd be very interested to see if I get one of those as well. But yeah, just, just a little bit shocked. But at the same time, I had to say... I've actually got a little bit of a review schedule going on at the moment. I've got some videos I've got planned, but most importantly, I'm actually planning to go away for about three weeks. So I'm a little bit struggling for time. So what we've agreed is, is that I'm going to do a first look of this. We're going to just unbox it and show you the DAC um, because the DACs haven't, I don't think they've shipped yet. Well, from what they've told me, um, the sales that they're doing, which is on drop at the moment or used to be mass drop, they haven't shipped yet. So they said, you know, people are really eager to get theirs. Let's at least show them it because they're coming soon. They're coming very soon. Didn't give me an exact ETA. But yeah, so I said, do you know what? We'll show it around. Then before I go on holiday, I'm probably going to uh, power this up. I won't power it up today. I'm going to run loads of burning stuff, plug my headphones in as well. Might have to get a new pair of headphones because it's a very fancy, very nice box, very big box, high res audio. Isn't there something about the high res audio sticker? I mean, it could be it could be a crap hundred pound speaker, but you put a high res audio sticker on it, it just gives me a little nerd chubby. Rest of the box, not a lot on there. Just that this is in black. It's just all black, and I was surprised at how heavy this box is. I mean, this is an expensive bit of audio gear. I, I'm going to look really forward to it, but yeah, I I, I don't think. I'll be doing a review for this for over a month, so I do apologise to anyone that wants to see a review, but I'm sure sure a few other people review it. I'm sure Z's going to review it as well, so you know, his review will probably be awesome. So yeah, really well packed. Foam pads on top. Let's get rid of foam. Let's have a look at all the parts it comes with then. So firstly, we have an American plug. They must have forgot I was in the UK, but that's a standard IEC, or as everyone calls them, a kettle lead in the UK. So... Yeah, that's I've got plenty of those, so we can replace that. There is a headphone adapter. TRS, 6.5mm. That can go in my box with the other 100 of those that I've collected over the last couple of decades. A USB cable. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it doesn't matter, use the cheapest one, but I would have liked to have seen maybe just a more higher quality looking USB cable, maybe a braided one or something. It's, it's all right. How long is it? Seeing off screen. Starts here, finishes here. That means nothing to you, but can reach the bottom down. It would go to, you know, the bottom of this desk here into a PC and back up. But yeah, we're probably half a meter longer on the USB cable and braid it. And here we have the Bluetooth antenna. Now, I'm not the biggest Bluetooth fan, and I will talk about Bluetooth a little bit more in a minute, but I'm expecting this to have good Bluetooth. But one thing I would have liked to have seen, see that's a very tiny little area. Now what's quite funny is down here, this little fuzzy audio one, you can't see the aerial flag because it's all wired up and won't pull forward, but the aerial is about twice as big. And the thing I noticed with the Topping MX3 versus that with the Bluetooth range, is that as long as I left my bedroom door open, this thing just talked to it all over my house with Bluetooth, didn't really have any interruptions. This one didn't. So what I would like to see, because I don't always, people don't always want big aerials coming back, is a little aerial for people who just use Bluetooth in their room. Maybe it's just because, you know, your computer's not powered on or you might be doing something else on your computer. Little aerial like this, but then I would like them to see them start including bigger antennas, especially on their more expensive products. So then you've got a bit more range. So yeah. And it is just the antenna that's doing it. As we know with Topping, with some of their recent products, you do get a remote. Do apologise, I've got a really, I've had a really bad cold. So there is a power mute. These will be your Bluetooth controls, I imagine. A little centre click button, an M button, what looks to be a brightness one, auto, FIR, line out, and headphones. It's probably going to switch you between headphone and line out. And it takes two triple a batteries not included but yeah i do like this top and remote i've actually got the mx3 at my girlfriend's now 
uh, hooked up to a pair of Wharfdale diamonds. I'm using it as instead of a soundbar. I'm really enjoying it actually. Using the subwoofer output on it as well. Then we also have, before we stuck on a menu, that is heavy. That thing weighs 1.4 kilos. There is the manual now. I would prefer a book manual, especially with something this expensive. Like I hate going through all of these things. It does my head in, but it's got everything in there. How you can use it all, how you use the remote, all the different graphs of that. But the same thing is as well, when you go to their website, their PDF manual is like that. And I don't want that. I want a page by page manual with, you know, table of contents and stuff, especially for something that does have more options. Um, it's just, it's minor things. These are minor things that we have to point out. Then there is, you know, just the new stuff they've got coming out. Love that little MX3 amp. I would also like to, while we're here topping, let me do some shopping. Wouldn't mind reviewing the DX3 Pro if you want to send that out. Fair. I actually knew it was coming from topping because of the, the um, delivery. I knew it was the delivery coming to work and there was import charges on it because it came from China. I was expecting it to be a DX3, DX3 Pro. I didn't expect it to be this little puppy. Oh, snug as a bug. Let's get down low and have a look at it. So here is the unit and just for scale, here's the Millennium Vulcan. So as you can see, this is a very big DAC headphone amplifier. All black is a bit fingerprint prone, but that's just because I've been moving it around. Give it a wipe and it's clean again. There's that high-res audio and it says high-res audio wireless there. Topping. DX7 Pro, 32-bit, 768 kilohertz, DSD, USB DAC. So this is featuring the Sabre ES9038 Pro chip. Um, so yeah, it's their top chip at the moment, although they are going to be using the AKM4493, like I said earlier, and the D90 as well. So it'd be very interesting to compare those two. I've sort of always lent towards the AKM because I just feel they're a little bit more musical. But this would probably be, you know, great because it's great with music, but it's also good to use in like studio um, applications as well. That's probably what I'd say about Sabre chips. Also got Bluetooth 5.0, which is running on this CSR8675 with LDAC. And that LDAC can run 24 bit up to 96 kilohertz. Talk about the Bluetooth a little bit more in a minute. Um, and that's also got the Exmos XU208, which can run PCM at 32 bit 768 kilohertz and DSD at 512, like we just read off the logo down the front i hate reading specs out and i've got a cold you can hear me i'm panting oh this is cold i got really cold earlier and put the heating on i think i'm having a heat stroke so here's the display at the front which you won't see because we're not going to turn it on today but that's an oled display you have a volume like volume dial here and you can obviously that's like a select button now, I think when this is set to line out, you can't adjust the volume on it anyway. So just so you know that, it'll be your source that you're using. I sort of actually quite like that. Now, I know some people complain about that, but what I hate is a volume knob here and a volume knob here. So the fact that one of the devices is stopping me, that makes me go, okay, this, this device sitting on top of this, this is the one I'm using. That's the remote I'm using. That's what I'm gonna continue with. I sort of always like my DAX, you know, to have that option. You know, so I don't adjust the volume on there and it's just somewhere else. Don't want to be like knob here, knob here, knob here. Does my head in a little bit, even though I like the sound of them. Does my head in. Okay then, let's have a little look at the headphone inputs then. So there's a six and a half millimeter and a 4.4 millimeter. Now these have an impedance output of 4.7 ohms. That's 840 milliwatts at 32 ohms and 150 milliwatts at 300 ohms. Now, if you switch over to the balance, you actually get an output impedance of 9.4 ohms, 1700 milliwatts at 32 ohms, and 450 milliwatts at 300 ohms. So, lots of power. Lots of power. Over to the side, not a lot to see. Just got these nice little chamfered edges. Underneath of the device, you see there, there is a little switch. So, that's to switch between 240 and 110. Make sure you set it for the right country before you turn it on couple of like CE logos made in China and stuff there. It's, it's a heavy, this feels heavy. My wrists are getting tired. So let's start by having a little look at the outputs then. So there is a phono output and there is an XLR output and you can switch between these as well. So you can switch between which output you wanna use or you can output to both. Um, I think you can from what I've read in the instructions. So for the um, balance XLR outputs, there's 126 decibels of signal to noise ratio and 122 decibels for the phono. I'm probably mostly gonna use the phono, but I like the idea that I could hook these up to my mixer behind me as well. 
and an output to my studio monitors. That's something that I'm quite looking forward to use. Now the IIS LVDS HDMI is something that I don't really know anything about. So yeah, there's that bit. And there's also an AES input as well. Coaxial input, I understand why they put them on there, but I would have preferred to have seen two opticals. But yeah, it's got a coaxial on it. Now, as for the optical, that one can do 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. That's probably going to be one that I run quite a lot. But then for your higher PCM and DSD stuff, um, you're going to want to use the USB because that can get you 768 kilohertz and it can also do 32 bit DSD 512 as well. And then there is the Bluetooth. Now, the Bluetooth actually supports LDAC, which it's a grey area whether my phone supports it or not. So I'll be looking forward to test that. I think my phone does support LDAC. But it also supports AACC, SBC, APTX, APTX LL, APTX HD, and then there's the LDAC as well. And I'm I'm interested in this. I'm really interested in seeing the Bluetooth because I hate Bluetooth and I feel like this could be the one. This could be the one to change my mind on Bluetooth. I mean, it's not going to make me pick over optical or USB, but this could be the one. This could be the one where I'm like, do you know what? I can't even be bothered to get up and turn the computer on to listen to my music. I'm just going to ping it from my phone got amazon music recently as well the music hd that app is shit but for 12 pound a month honestly i've been really enjoying it which was good because i was going to get tidal so it saved me like eight quid a month same price of tidal i get prime as well so yeah just waffling about stuff that's not even related to the video now that's just the last look for anyone dx7 pro there's the front again beautiful looking device beautiful looking device i'm glad they haven't put too many labels on here as well you know like some of the chinese companies they just put a label here 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 it does this 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 and that it's like yeah i know but i don't want to see it over the front the front of this looks nice it just looks nice to be fair i'd probably even get rid of that bit i'll just have top in dx7 pro maybe do the writing in gold gold leaf do it in gold leaf it'd look awesome but anyway yeah uh, thank you for sending it over top in sorry it's just been a sort of short unplanned video obviously i didn't know it was coming just wanted to show it to you guys because i know there's a lot of you that have pre-ordered from drop and are very eager to get yours so hopefully this gets you a bit more hyped and you should be getting your unit very soon thanks for watching um any questions let me know in the description below but like i said i'm not going to be fully testing this for about two three weeks anyway and make sure you come back for the full review where we'll test the shit out of this thing